Welcome to the first discussion on the basic principles of economics of demand and supply in the market. We're going to start with demand. Demand looks like this. It's a schedule of numbers. These are prices of hot dogs, and this is the quantity of hot dogs demanded. So what we have is at $5, I demand one hot dog. At $4, I demand two hot dogs. At $3, I demand three hot dogs. At $2, I demand four hot dogs. And at $1, I demand five hot dogs. Simple enough, right? We've got our hot dog up here, and it's pretty nice. We've got the bun, the dog, and the bottom bun, and it's delicious, that first hot dog. I really, really enjoy it, so I'm willing to pay a lot of money for it. Five dollars, as a matter of fact. Well, what if we buy a second hot dog, so we're going to get two hot dogs. What about that? Well, you know, the first hot dog was great, but the second hot dog, not as yummy, because I've already had a hot dog, so this second hot dog, I'm only willing to spend four dollars on it. Then how about the third hot dog? I'm starting to get a little bit full. The fourth hot dog, the fifth hot dog, actually I've got ketchup all over my mouth. I'm not very interested in it, so I'm only going to willing willing to spend one dollar. Something's happening here. As I add my hot dogs, I'm getting less value. This is one reason why the law of demand holds. This is our first little bit of law. It's very important, this concept. So important, I'm going to change my color here. This is what the law of demand is based on, not primarily, but very much. It's called diminishing marginal utility. Very important to understanding supply and demand in markets and why this is such an important thing and why markets work. Well, what's going on here? As I add an extra unit of hot dog from one to two, my satisfaction or my satisfying of want, my happiness, my utility goes down. So I'm willing to spend less from five to four dollars. Same thing happens from two to three and I'm willing to spend less from four to three from the fourth hot dog. How much am I willing to spend? Only two dollars. Marginal, the next hot dog, how much is it worth to me? Less because my utility is going down. This is why as the price goes down, I'm willing to buy more hot dogs. And as the price goes up, I'm willing to buy fewer hot dogs. Look, man, at five dollars, I'm not getting five dollars worth of value for my when I eat my fifth hot dog, so I'm not going to buy five hot dogs. I'm not going to buy four, three, two. I'm going to just buy the one here. So the law of demand is very important, and we'll see why, because it gives us an idea of why demand is associated with benefit or utility. There are other reasons why when the price goes down, you buy more. Here's another one. It's called the income effect. It's very simple. As the price goes down, you have more income available, so you buy more hot dogs. That simple. As the price goes up, you have less income available, so you buy fewer hot dogs. How about number three? Number three is the substitution effect. Substitution effect. Now the substitution effect is a little bit more complicated, but not too bad. As the price of hot dogs goes down, you stop buying hamburgers. They're relatively more expensive, so you buy more hot dogs. As the price of hot dogs goes up, you substitute away from hot dogs and buy more hamburgers. So you get this kind of substitution effect, income effect. They're interesting, but really, for understanding supply and demand in markets, it's this idea I want you to keep in mind, this idea of diminishing margin utility, that underneath the demand curve, there's something to do with how much benefit we get from eating something or how much benefit we get from purchasing something and that that benefit goes down as we purchase or buy or consume more of it. In the next Blackboard discussion, we'll draw the demand curve and talk a little bit more about the law of demand and it should be pretty short. See you there.